Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 594. Estrogen Replacement Therapy Update, The Truth. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about estrogen therapy and why you think it's dangerous and why it isn't dangerous and why you should accept estrogen replacement therapy if you are menopausal. So let me first start by saying that I am doing this HealthCast at the request of my nurse practitioners because they're always asked questions After patients come to see me, then they're asked, are you sure it's really safe? Are you sure I'm not going to get a blood clot? Are you sure that I'm uh, not going to have heart disease because of this? All of the things that they've heard in the media about estrogen. It seems to have been a campaign against estrogen um, about 20 years ago. In 2001, uh, we started aggressively as physicians telling people that they shouldn't take estrogen. Now, I didn't do that. And the reason was that I had never seen, in all the years of, of being a gynecologist and all the years of taking care of women, um, I had not seen patients who had been on estrogen have side effects as they were claiming people with estrogen uh, replacement therapy had. So none of the research, when you look at research and you're a doctor, what you should do is say, here's this research. And does it match everything I've seen during clinical practice? Does it match anything I've seen during clinical practice? And it didn't. So so the things I looked at were, do my patients who are on estrogen have a higher rate of breast cancer? And the answer is no. I had even between people who refused estrogen replacement therapy and people who had estrogen replacement therapy, they had an in my practice, an equal rate of getting breast cancer. So it doesn't prevent breast cancer. It just doesn't increase your risk of breast cancer. So so because of that, the WHI study was, um, in my mind, not a good study. Then I read the WHI study, and after I read it, I realized that what they were saying in that study was, Not that estrogen was the problem, but they proved that a progestin, now progestins aren't the same as progesterone. Progestins are a synthetic um, medication that is like progesterone, but has many side effects. So the women that took the progestin and estrogen did have a higher rate of breast cancer and a higher rate of heart disease. The women who had had a hysterectomy did not need progestin, so all they had was estrogen. And they had a lower rate of heart disease and breast cancer than women who took nothing. Remember, it's always, they were comparing progestin and estrogen, estrogen only, and people who took nothing. So women who took estrogen only were in a better position and with lower risk of both heart disease and and breast cancer. So why are we still told this? Part of the reason is that what your doctor tells you lags behind um, what the facts are, and not every doctor looks at the whole study. Most doctors are very busy, very tired. They're trying to keep up with their practices, and they can't read the whole study, which I did. That's one thing. The next thing is, We usually believe what we were taught in medical school, even if it isn't true. So we were taught in medical school that estrogen wasn't good for people. Well, we gave estrogen at that time, back in the 70s, all we did was give oral estrogen and progestin together. So yes, that did increase the risk of heart attack, and it did increase the risk of um, 
breast cancer, but that's because the progestin was in there. But that's not what they told us. They told us it was because of the estrogen. This study actually now proves it's not the estrogen. It's the progestin in the estrogen. So let, before I go on with my next frequently asked questions of my patients to my nurse practitioners, I'd like to go over some lingo that doctors use. When doctors say ERT, they're saying estrogen replacement therapy, and that means a patient only gets estrogen. She does not get a progestin or a progesterone, and that is safe and appropriate for people who have had a hysterectomy. People who do not have a uterus do not require progesterone. They, the reason you get progesterone or a progestin is merely to treat your uterus and to keep your uterus from bleeding postmenopausally and to prevent uterine cancer. So having said that, estrogen ET replacement therapy is, or sometimes they say ERT, is only estrogen replaced to patients who are menopausal. The other, um, the other letters that they use is called HRT, which means hormone replacement therapy. HRT implies an estrogen of some type plus a progestin of some, some type, although there are some doctors who use natural progesterone instead of progestin like me. So HRT is hormones, two hormones, estradiol or a type of estrogen, another type of estrogen, and a progestin or a progesterone. So that would be given to somebody with a uterus who is menopausal, and the progestin or the progesterone will be given to protect the uterus itself from cancer or bleeding. Then we also added ET, which is estradiol and testosterone replacement therapy. That is what we do in, in my office uh, with long-acting bioidentical testosterone pellets and estradiol pellets. They're both made from yams. So they are very safe, and uh, they, both hormones are given to you under the skin. They are non-oral. You don't swallow anything, and they last for four to six months, depending on uh, how much you get and how fast your metabolism is. We also have EPT, which is not a pregnancy test, but it is estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone, and that is something that we also use in patients who have a uterus that's we use estradiol, progesterone, natural progesterone, just like you used to make when you had periods, and testosterone. That's EPT. So those are the, and I guess I'd call them anacronyms. Maybe that's the wrong word, but that's how we refer to these different types of therapy, both in written and verbal communication. So uh, we already, I, I already told you the difference between progesterone, which is natural and does not have side effects of of uh, breast cancer or um, heart disease, and progestin, which does have those risks. So I don't use a progestin because it's, I wouldn't take a progestin. That is actually the same thing. Progestins are in birth control pills. So some people may want to th rethink that uh, because it is not necessarily good for your heart or good for, um, or good for your breasts. Now, Let's go one step farther and say, now that we've discussed the difference between estrogen replacement therapy, testosterone replacement, and estrogen, and the E, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, plus the HRT, it sounds like we're just doing the, you know, the alphabet, um, what, what kinds of those, what choice of those hormones causes you to have a blood clot. Because it's always been said, if you're on estrogen, and they don't say what type, then you're at risk for a blood clot. But the fact is, is that doctors don't understand the difference. The last 10 years of research has shown that non-oral estrogen, meaning pellets, like I do, or patches, or estrogen creams, or estrogen gels, or sublingual, under the tongue, estrogen, does not cause any blood clots. Therefore, I mean, that doesn't mean if you're taking them, you can't get a blood clot for a different reason, 
but it is not going to cause you or increase your risk of blood clots. However, if you take one of the oral estrogens, which is like estradiol or premarin or conjugated estrogens, and you take them orally, they increase the risk of blood clots because when they go through your stomach and into your liver, they stimulate the different clotting factors. And so they can actually increase or cause you to have a blood clot. So if you're on a non-oral form and you're in the ER and they say, well, you're on estrogen, you should stop. Well, they don't know the difference. If you're not on an oral estrogen, then you don't need to stop taking a non-oral estrogen if you have a blood clot. You need to do exactly what they say otherwise, but I don't believe that they really get the difference between non-oral and oral in the emergency room um, physician's literature. So that's very important. No, what I do with pellets does not increase the risk of blood clots at all. Um, one of the other things that we always get asked, and because it's been so confusing in terms of what the experts have said, is how long can I take estrogen? Well, you can take estrogen as long as you live, as long as there's not a reason that you can't take it. And if you're not taking oral estrogens, um, then there are very few reasons why you can't take estrogen. Um, one of them might be if you did develop breast cancer that had estrogen receptor positive uh, breast cancer, then it would not be wise to take estrogens. And we don't give any kind of estrogen to people with an estrogen receptor positive because it can stimulate the growth of that breast cancer. If you have a different kind of breast cancer that does not have estrogen receptors, then you can still take estrogen. It is not going to stimulate that particular cancer. So it is only a small group of people who have a specific kind of breast cancer who can't continue taking their non-oral estrogen. And, it's, and blood clots don't preclude taking non-oral estrogen either. So just as an aside, most blood clots have to do with um, obesity and people being sedentary, not getting up, walking around, and exercising. They also are associated with being at high altitudes, like in an airplane on a very long flight and not moving. Those are the highest risk for blood clots. But estrogen that is non-oral is not one of them. Estrogen that's oral is one of them. So you do need to switch if you are on an oral estrogen and you're worried about blood clots. Um, the, let me go back to how long you can take estrogen. The reason this is asked is because after the WHI study came out, the American College of OBGYN all of a sudden came out with just a statement. You shouldn't take estrogen longer than two, two years. Where they got that information is not scientific. That was just a, out of the blue, they pulled down two years and decided. Then a little bit later, they went up to three years. Now they're up to five years. And I'm going to tell you that there is no reason to stop estrogen as you age. It is keeping you young and, in fact, is protecting you from heart disease. It is protecting you from Alzheimer's. It's protecting you from diabetes. It is protecting you from obesity, as long as it is non-oral. Oral can increase obesity, can increase weight gain. So there are some things that oral estrogen does that non-oral estrogen does not do. So what do you need estrogen for? That's what everybody asks me. Why do I need estrogen? I really want my sex drive back, but I don't, I don't know that I need estrogen. I want testosterone. So this is what I tell my patients, and I, I'm going to make sure I refer to the list so I don't miss anything. So estrogen brings women back who are aging back to a physiologic state, or physiology is how your body works. It metabolically, physiologically brings you back to a younger age when you take estrogen. Estrogen also prevents osteoporosis. It is, it is the best bone builder other than testosterone, which is also a great bone builder. Those two are your best bone builders. You don't, you don't need any of the other medications that I won't list that they give for bone building. You just need your hormones back. And if you do that and take calcium, vitamin D, um, 
vitamin K2 and vitamin C, then you have the building blocks for bones and then, and you also have the hormones that will put those building blocks into bone and restructure and rebuild your bones. So it prevents osteoporosis, which only happens to women as we lose our uh, estrogen and our testosterone and only happens to men who are very old and have lost their testosterone and had a low level for a very long time. Okay, what else does estrogen do? Well, this is very important. It keeps you from having pain during intercourse. What happens with menopause is your bottom, your vagina, your vulva, your bottom becomes very dry. Your skin on your bottom becomes paper thin and will crack and bleed. The vagina itself becomes very pale, like a pale pink, not a bright, bright, healthy pink. And it also becomes very small, so small that in some of my patients who had menopause for a decade or two, I couldn't even get a Q-tip in to do a pap smear. So that's what aging does to your bottom. And you can't have sex if, you're, if you have that kind of um, loss of hormone for many years. It, it will cause you to bleed. It will actually tear the tissue. And that's something really painful and something that can be prevented. So that estrogen helps make you able to have a normal vagina, a normal vulva, and be able to have intercourse. Um, what, what else does it do? Well, lots of my patients come in and say, you know, I have, my bladder doesn't work. I get infections all the time. And I, um, and my bladder has uh, kind of, ha it, it contracts all the time and I get little spurts of urine for no apparent reason, or they have very irritable bladders, which is what that kind of describes, but they have urine loss when they cough and sneeze much more than they, uh, they did before they were in menopause. So estrogen prevents all that. Estrogen is actually active on your bladder. It actually makes the bladder, the, the tissue in your bladder thicker and more resistant to bacteria. It also makes your urethra, that little tiny tube that comes from your bladder to the outside, it thickens that so that it doesn't get infected, that it doesn't get um, attacked by bacteria. And it also doesn't just hurt when you pee because that's one of the things when you don't have any estrogen to make it, to make the tissue young and alive, then it hurts when you pee often. And it may not even be an infection. It just may be painful urination. So that's also something estrogen does. Um, estrogen keeps your the front part of your hair growing here. It also keeps your skin soft and smooth. It keeps you looking youthful and not looking angular and drawn. It keeps your skin plump. I mean, that's very important. It keeps you looking young. So if you're not interested in being healthy, maybe I can motivate you to get estrogen by appealing to uh, to your more self-interest and, and, and youthful desire. Um, so now another thing it, pre it prevents, which you all know, is that it prevents hot flashes and night sweats. So what happens when you're in menopause is you, and, and by the way, you go into menopause, you never come out of menopause. Menopause is not something that ends. It's Hotel California. You enter and you cannot leave. So when, you're, when your ovaries are gone, they're gone. They are not making eggs. They're not making estrogen. They're not making testosterone. And they're not making progesterone. So they, when I'd operate on someone who's been menopausal for a while, their ovaries went from looking like a nice, round, plump, white organ to almost a little ridge uh, like a, a shriveled almond. And they're not doing anything. So that's not going to come back. There's no way to make an ovary come back. But, but your brain doesn't know or can't get the message that your ovaries are no longer working. So your brain puts out FSH and LH. And those two hormones from your pituitary gland pound your ovary and trying to make your ovary make estrogen. But it doesn't do anything. So then it ups its game. The FSH and LH go up higher. You have worse hot flashes. You have worse night sweats. You wake up all night long. You don't get a good rest. And those are things that age us as well. But they also make us irritable and unable to work because we are so tired. 
and so sick of changing the sheets and changing our clothes because of the hot flashes. They might even cause us anxiety attacks, which changes our whole, whole personality. I mean, this actually puts us in a, a, in a place where we can't work or we can't take care of our families. So that is, is something that you want to prevent by just taking estrogen. So estrogen prevents insomnia. It also prevents heart disease by keeping your um, high-density li uh, lipids elevated and your LDL your lower. So estrogen is protective for your heart and protects you from um, collecting plaque on your blood vessels. Then it also uh, prevents your immune system from decreasing with age. So basically the reason people over 60 need different and more uh, and stronger immunizations or vaccines is because our immune system doesn't respond like it used to after we're 60. So to get our immune system back, we need to have both testosterone, which stimulates the production of T cells and T killer cells and T helper cells, but we also need to have um, estrogen to uh, improve our immune system uh, effects. So to keep yourself from getting cancer, viruses, and bacteria, estrogen is a helper for that. And testosterone is really also helpful. The last thing that your um, estrogen does for you is it prevents dementia. It keeps you from getting a shrunken brain and a brain that has that can't think anymore. So that so if you want to prevent that, you will get you'll get a 10-year extension on developing uh, Alzheimer's disease if you start taking estrogen 10 years after within 10 years of your menopause. Last but not least, if your doctor says, hey, I'm not giving you estrogen, I don't believe in it, you can tell them it's not a religion, that it is a hormone that you had the first half of your life and you want to have it for the second half, and you don't want oral, you don't want oral estrogen, you want non-oral form, and you're not taking a progestin. There's something called Prometrium that's also a prescription you don't have to go to a special pharmacy for. You can take Prometrium, which is natural progester progesterone, as a pill to protect your uterus. So ask for what you need. If they still don't want to treat you, then go to a different doctor. I mean, that doctor hasn't been keeping up with his, with his uh, or her um, research. Um, you deserve to get what you need to age in a healthy manner, and you need to do this the rest of your life unless there's a reason that you can't take estrogen. And the only reason I can think of at this point that you can't take non-oral estrogen would be if you did develop uh, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. But other than that, you can take estrogen and keep all the organs in your body healthy. And I think you should. I want people to be healthy throughout their life, not just for the first half of their life. So please join us next week. We'll talk to the guys next week about something that they're interested in. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.